there is a long way to go before whole organs like the kidney could be printed. I hope that doesn't remain a fantasy. But of course the world of fantasy is evolving just as fast as any other, and I've heard whispers of a virtual reality entertainment system so immersive, it makes you react like you're really there. In the lucrative world of entertainment, virtual reality has been an elusive dream for decades. Frankly, it's been disappointing. Will we ever be able to engage so completely that what is real and what is imaginary becomes a distinction just in our minds? A team in California claim they've made a breakthrough. Chris Elias Smith is on his way to field test a futuristic headset they have developed, and to find out if it warrants all the interest it's generating. When I was a kid, virtual reality was going to open the door to any universe I could imagine. I could be a warrior, a starship captain, a snowmobile rider, anything, anywhere, anytime. And the technology of VR was just around the corner. Out of the way, out of the way. Uh-oh. Snowmobiles and trees do not mix. This is big. It's loud. Pretty fast. It isn't VR. You just won the gold medal. First, you can dance, you can dance. That's right. Governments and corporations are piling millions of dollars into virtual reality research. This is a dream from science fiction, but it never really found it into the everyday world. Is that about to change? I'm here in Southern California to meet Palmer Lucky. Has he made VR work? I'm going in. If there's a secret inside, I'm gonna find out what it is. Chris Lysmith. Palmer Lucky. How you doing? Really good. Great. So Palmer, you probably know better than anyone else that people have been trying to do VR for the last 20 years or so. What in particular did you bring together in order to succeed where others have failed? You've seen The Matrix and you're a gamer. You want the Matrix technology for all your games. And what I found out as I researched is that virtual reality actually isn't as advanced as a lot of people think. Did you look at what was out there? I bought an enormous number of head-mounted displays and I started to take them apart, you know, see how they worked, and then try to make improvements and modifications to them. So you've got all kinds of stuff sitting on your desk here, and one of the things that pops out is this guy. So this is an old IO glasses PC. You want so, to try it out? Yeah, for sure. So there you go. You can see all this right. grid. You're in a cutting edge virtual reality <laughs> environment right now. That's right. Oh, that's crazy. So you can see, so I'm looking there, and I go back. I can see the problem here. This old technology can't accurately track my head movement. The walls are moving in a strange way, and it's making my head spin. Developers call it drift. So can you explain what I'm seeing and why it's so disorienting? So, so what you're seeing is tracking that's being performed primarily by an accelerometer. And the problem with an accelerometer is that it can really only measure acceleration and the direction of gravity. So you can see the entire room is, you know, shifting around you as you look around. Yeah. This poor tracking causes another problem, latency. You move, and there's a lag in response time. It doesn't make for a comfortable or useful experience. But apparently, Palmer Lucky and his team have cracked the problem of both drift and latency by building the Oculus Rift. It's time to see how it works. So we got the Oculus Rift development kit. Cool, so can I actually take this puppy apart? Y you can, yeah. So this is basically like part of uh, ski goggles. Exactly. What's this guy do? So that's our okay. custom tracker that we designed specifically with VR in mind. Nate tells me this chip contains a digital gyroscope that senses changes in head orientation a thousand times a second. And, like the inner ear, sends signals to a sophisticated processor. And that sits right in that front face plate, tracking the user's movements. This actually reminds me of how the brain works. And essentially, you're taking the same measurements that the brain does and using those to update the screen just the way the real world would be updated. Yeah. So the Oculus Rift has some parts of a brain on a chip. Oculus Rift has reduced the problems of drift and latency, but for virtual reality to really work from the moment you plug in, you have to be unaware of your real surroundings and immersed inside the virtual environment. The technology needs to make you believe in what you're seeing. Now these do not look normal. 
What is this? This is not usually in a ski mask. Sure, so this is the whole uh, lens assembly. All the secret magic of the Rift is really, a lot of it's here. They are basically strong magnification lenses and gives it a distortion that actually wraps it around you when you're looking through it. So this is allowing it to go all the way across my field of vision, making it more immersive. Exactly. Like those little screens before. Exactly. All right, so those are pointed at this screen. And they I are. It, that's what this is. To see how it works, I need to fire it up and take a look. Just take that with two hands, bring it up to your eyes, and actually just pull the strap over your head just like you would ski goggles. All right, oh, it's pretty blurry. What you want to do is find the sweet spot right in the center of the optic. So if you just move it up and down Oh, a there we bit, go. Yeah. Better? Yep. Great. Just dropped right in. I'm hooked up to a popular video game, except I'll be playing it in a virtual 3D world. So what I'm seeing on the monitor is actually the same thing that's being rendered inside the headset. We have two images of the game world split for each eye. And inside the Rift, what you're seeing, Chris... There's only one. There's only one, <laughs> right. Your brain is fusing these together. It's designed to behave exactly like uh, your eyes do in real life. And that's a big part of what makes the Rift so immersive, is that stereo depth, that when you look off in the distance, you actually get that sense of distance and scale. All right, so do this for me. Look left, look right, up, down, and then actually look over your shoulder I 180, don't have any legs. <laughs> 180 degrees behind you. So turn your body and actually look behind you. So you do have full 360 degree low latency head tracking, a big part of what makes the Rift an immersive experience. So I'm gonna hand you a controller. Okay. Just hands out. There you go. <laughs> so you're set. You can take off through the city of Hawking. Cool. As soon as you turn your head, you can see the entire thing. It's like you're in the city. So I'm fighting this evil mech warrior guy here and uh, I don't have any problem tracking him at all. I can run around, I can stare at him. Why can I do this so easily? One of the key parts of the Rift is really that low latency head tracking. It's really crucial to having an immersive experience, right? We need the player to feel as though they're there in the world. There's no way to show the experience the way I see it, but I can't sense any latency problems. The sensor data is being processed so fast that the lag is roughly 30 milliseconds. That's getting close to how we see the real world. Below 20 milliseconds, any delay is no longer perceptible. If we want to get to the holodeck, we need to minimize latency as much as possible, driving down towards zero milliseconds. So, give me your initial impressions. This is like I'm there. Ah, you know what's, yeah, as soon as you start to fall, it goes right to your, uh, Vestibular system. There's the neuroscientist in me. I really feel like I'm falling. That's wicked. That's yeah. what the Rift's all about, letting players step inside the game and experience it. Welcome back. Wow. Sorry I made it all sweaty. No, it's <laughs> fine. Your body in VR really reacts the way it would to real life. So that sense of falling gives you a little bit of fear, a little panic inducing. Your yeah. heartbeat starts to go up and you sweat. You're right. It's hard to describe. Words escape me. A, uh, That's the reaction very we like. Very impressive. So I play games, I don't make them. When am I going to get an Oculus Rift? We don't want to release something before it's ready. We have to make sure it's right. At the same time, we want this to come out just as much as anyone else does. So are we talking weeks, months, years? We're talking months, not years. A full production launch is expected in 2014. With virtual reality, this version of Fantasy and Escape will be even more mind-blowing. The tech world is betting that Oculus Rift is going to be a game changer. As processing power increases, VR is bound to improve. But there is still a question about the interface between us and the technology. To become truly seamless, computers need to read our minds. How can science make this possible? Convergence between the real and digital worlds will one day be so profound, it could be a defining force that helps shape our future. Today, interaction is limited by our physical selves and the devices we use. I would like to see a time when it's not. That would be a truly liberating revolution, but could it happen? Jim al Khalili is in the Netherlands to find the answer. Imagine if one day we could interact with our technology and with each other using nothing more than the power of thought. Morning. 
devices like this could become a distant memory. But is it possible to control machines directly with our minds? Neuroscientists at Maastricht University are going to show Jim how far their experiments in this area have come. The driving force behind this project is Bettina Sorger. She's developed a system that can translate three types of mental activity, reading, arithmetic and visualising images, into letters of the alphabet. There are always several brain regions involved in a particular mental task. For example, when you perform a motor imagery task. Motor means I'm, I'm moving my hand. Then quite a lot areas are active. But this set of regions involved will be different for another task. For example, mental calculation. So um, doing my times table. Yeah. And for a third task, for example, in a speech, you just recite a poem, you know by heart. Um, there will be a third network of brain regions involved. So different mental tasks.